Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Deeper Dive. I'm Pastor Aaron, my good buddy Steve, and if you can't tell by watching the videos previous to this, we do them every week. We love doing this. <laughs> uh, I, I really appreciate you inviting me back Man, I, so many times. I'm, I I'm love loving it. it. I, I love it. So what is this? What is going on? For those of you first time checking in, this is The Deeper Dive, where we take our Sunday messages and sometimes Sunday series, and we just take a deeper look. Sometimes it's a practical look. Sometimes it's just a deeper revelation or deeper perspective on what we've been learning in our Sunday morning services. So in this format where we can conversate about it, yeah. so much more comes out. Yeah. So much more comes out. And there's things that, you know, people think, oh, well, you're a pastor. And let me just tell you, I'm also a human. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, just a, I'm just a man like everyone else who loves the Lord. Just a man of God, but still a man. And when, I, when you sit in places like this, when you watch The Deeper Dive or get in a group, and I'm just going to do a plug in here, if you get in a group with people of other believers on the same journey, they're trying to get closer to God, this right here, man, we, we do this and you get to watch it, but me and Steve grow just by sitting here and talking about the Word and what how it affected him on Sunday, yeah. how it affected me, it changes things. Yeah, I, so. Are you talking about plug-ins? Yeah. Did you know I, I visited a life group on Friday? Did you? I did. Whose group did you go to? I went to Matt LaProd's. I love this guy. Yeah, yeah. It was great, great time. Yeah. Uh, Y'all should really get in a life group if you're not already. Yeah. Uh, what'd you say? Life groups are for war, right? So Life groups are for war. Yeah. If you we want had to do a... spiritual war, you want to go to war for the king. If Jesus means something to you and you think, okay, yeah, I really want to serve. This is how you do it. This is how you prepare yourself. This this right here, and we have this going on all in the church Get involved. You yeah. can get at the go out at the to the desk in the lobby next time you're at church. Uh, get connected. Um, one of the groups he mentioned, Matt Laprade and Desiree, his wife, and then Amani and Daniel. They do the host home. Play. It's just a it's a great group. There's groups all over. Let's pray though, and let's go straight into the deeper dive today. We love you. Let's go. God, we thank you today. We honor you. Bless your people today, wherever they are, whatever's going on. Be with them. Empower them. Strengthen them. God, open them. Open them to hear you in their everyday lives, in their everyday choices. And now, right here in this episode of The Deeper Dive, as we take a deeper look at this Sunday's message, I pray that you're with us, with me and Steve, as we just open up our minds to you. And whatever comes out, Lord, just grow us. It's all about you. It's in your name we pray. And we say amen. Amen. Before you start, you always kick it over to me. So I'm going to start real quick and kick it over to you and say, <laughs> okay, Aaron, go for why it. don't you get us started? Okay, I will do that. I have done that, haven't I? Every I, always time. I I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, well, something that spoke out to me, as you know, um, go watch the sermon. We don't try to recap the sermon, but go deeper. So Pastor Sharon taught this past Sunday, and it was the completion of our two-week marriage series, if you will. And... Sydney and my wife and I, we spoke last week, and we did a deeper dive, a couple episodes on that. And then Pastor Sharon, uh, this is just the way I talk, but she cleaned it up this week, you know, to finish the series. So the way that I receive things, and I was a part of the teaching team on it, is Sydney and I got to seek the Lord, and it was so cool for us, Steve, because we seek the Lord and get this message that was kind of like setting the ground rules and setting the definitions per God as to who, what is man's role and what is woman's role as individuals in the kingdom, but then connected in the kingdom. That yeah. was kind of like setting the groundwork. And then Pastor Sharon came in this past Sunday and gave like so much just general application. Yeah. I felt like while we were setting, while Sidney and I felt like the Lord wanted us to set definitions and perspective, Pastor Sharon comes in and what God gave her was, Okay, now that you have that perspective, she kind of, it was just... Here's how you make it all work together. Yeah, yes. It was just so practical. So um, a few things that stuck out to me. Uh, fun little quote, and I'm probably never going to forgive it. Uh, forget it. <laughs> forgive it. You're already forgiven. I'm already forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She said in her sermon, marriage takes two forgivers. Yeah. And I was thinking, holy snot, isn't that the truth? I don't know about your marriage, but... Uh, I usually need more forgiveness than I forgive. But yeah, right. it, it requires both forgivers. You, you both have to be forgivers. If you're not, it's just not going to work. Yeah. It, and it's and, I, and again, as we pointed out the week before when sitting and I was teaching, marriage is such a depiction of the relationship we have with Christ because it requires... For, our, how much forgiveness are we drawing from Christ all the time? Yeah. Right? And then he built this into marriage between man and woman. It's like, if this is going to work... <laughs> There's going to be a lot of forgiveness 
a lot of forget. So that's that stuck out to me, um, and all the practicalities. And let, let's let's just go through a few of them. I know um, we were talking before, and some of the things that you brought up. We were talking uh, the choices. I mean, you're going to pause you there. Yeah, I don't know if Pastor Sharon watches the deeper dive or not. <laughs> but how awesome is it that she chose yeah. to use the word choice? She did. That, that there's four did. choices to make. Four choices. To, to have a long-lasting, you know, lifelong marriage. And notice, it. okay, it, what he's referencing, go back and watch a couple weeks ago, I think it's episode 20. Episode 20. Episode 20 of The Deeper Dive, it's in two parts. And we talked about choice, making everyday choices as a, as a Christian, what that's like, just Everything's a choice. You, Hashtag you, kingdom choices versus serpent choices. That right? This yeah. it's, so we talked about this, and then like two weeks later, Pastor Sharon preaches it, and it's like, I don't, you know, you can almost see me and Steve. Steve's working the sound booth. Yeah, you know, just look yeah. at each other because she brings that whole that whole kingdom principle into marriage, and it's like there's four choices, and she even took a minute to talk about that they're choices. Yeah, right. They are choices. So if um, <laughs> if you're going to make this work, you have to make the choice to make it work. Yeah, yeah. It's all about making choices. Yeah. Uh, the four choices, just, I know we're not supposed to recap, but I'm just going to talk about the four Go choices. It, so you, everybody knows where we're coming from. Is number one is loving unconditionally. So love unconditionally. Oh, we got to come back to that. The way Jesus loves the church, yeah. Mm. Number two was make your marriage a priority. Number three was remain faithful to the marriage uh, vow. And yep. then uh, make Jesus the third person in your marriage was the fourth choice. Where do you want to start? Um, Jesus. Let's start with Jesus as the third person in your marriage. Oh. Let's this one, about. this one hit home for me. I got a man. I got a boatload of notes. <laughs> you got a, bu- a bunch of notes for it. <laughs> Pastor Sharon had mentioned that the divorce rate in America is is one in two, fifty percent. Yeah, I've um, heard that. It, it really depends on the study you you read. You know, the number yep. fluctuates up and down, but uh, the general consensus is it's way too much. Do they make that? It, I agree. Is, do they make that population specific at all, or is it like? I, I don't think so. Um, but my question to you is: if the if we go with the assumption that it's a fifty percent divorce rate mm-hmm. in the United States, yeah, where do you think the Christian, the believer, divorce rate falls? Higher, lower, the same? This is this is kind of where my mind was going. I was just like, I wonder if there's been had there been studies where it's because I want to say that in the Christian world it's lower. And that, I, I don't know. <laughs> it depends on the study. There's a lot of studies out there to go look at, and I would encourage you to look at more than one source. Sure. But um, based on my research, it's anywhere from about 20% less wow. to the same-ish to even slightly higher Christian so divorces that... versus non-Christian divorces. Now, see, something that I'll add to that is, because I've done some extensive... Um, I've done many, many classes, put it that way, many classes involving premarital counseling and stuff with what I did in school. And there is a big stat that the Christian community likes to taunt uh, or tote. There you go. It, it's, it's something to brag about that when you involve biblical premarital counseling into your relationship before you get married, it reduces divorce rates by 35%. So in other words, they are 35% less likely to end up in the front of a counselor or talking about divorce just because they did premarital, biblical premarital counseling. So I know that to be true, but I didn't realize that there, I, I knew that was kind of like what has been told to me and showed me to me in research and in uh, college. But then beyond that, I've never seen a final product statistic like that. I saw something else. And I, I don't even have this in my notes. It just caught my eye while I was sure. doing this research, which is um, uh, not cohabitating prior to marriage. Mm. Also, uh, decreases your risk of divorce by 35%. <laughs> Man, why don't we just take all these different percentages and add them up? And we should like... <laughs> get to no divorces, right? Yeah, it's, it feels like that. And it comes back to what we pre- uh, what we preached that two weeks ago, and this this series kind of built just beautifully. And, I, and I'll just say this, Pastor Sharon and us, uh, Pastor Sharon taught this week, and then Sidney and I taught the week before. We didn't collaborate or anything. We just both sought the Lord, and it went together. So we talked about, and the sermon title that God gave us when we spoke was God's design, by His design. And the way it is, is like, I know it's like, well, why can't we cohabitate? Well, by design, God didn't make it that way. It's like you're going to make the decision to get married and come together. The man, go in, in Old Testament ways, the man would go away and prepare a place for his wife, yeah. come back and get her, and he wasn't with her until he was ready to be with her in that place, marriage. 
And Which is, by the way, what Jesus is doing for us. He's exactly. off preparing a place for his bride. He's coming back. God's design. God's design. It's in the fundamental fabric of who we are. And when you just do life God's way and you stop trying to resist it and trying to find workarounds and smart maneuvers to, let's call them clever maneuvers, and have some kingdom choices backed up by kingdom thoughts and kingdom motive. Let's just king hashtag kingdom everything. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag kingdom thoughts, kingdom choices, kingdom motives, kingdom design. Yeah. When you follow that kingdom design, these negative things that we're hearing statistics about, 50% divorce rate in America, not for, that, that's America, but we're from a different kingdom. We are. I, this one really touched me because I really truly feel, again, this is my opinion, but I truly feel that most of the divorces that happen um, with Christian couples are because of point number four, not having God at the center. Let's talk. Um, so I did a lot of research. This is So one of the strongest geometric shapes you can have when mm -hmm. you're talking about building things, building a, uh, constructing a building, building a bridge, Got a tower, one of the strongest geometric shapes you can have, and you can try this at home, is a triangle. If you make just a square with no other further support, that square will do this. You ever framed up a wall or anything until you put cross beams in? I, it does this. I will confess I have not done that, but what I have done is try to build houses out of popsicle sticks, and I know what you're talking yeah. about. Squares wiggle. Any shape you choose, right, mm -hmm. wiggle. Until you make a triangle. Really? A triangle is one of the strongest geometric shapes uh, that God gave us. And mm. it's a picture of how he designed marriage to be. Pastor Sharon said, you have to have Jesus as the third person in your marriage. And I would say, you have to have Jesus. You have to have God as the center. Yeah. The center at the top of the triangle. If you're both focused upward it. in yeah. a triangle, what happens as you both go closer to God? You're getting closer together. That's cool. Right? And those two points are actually the furthest from each other Yeah. at that point. Like, the two bottom pieces of the triangle are the furthest from each other. So, you see the line right there? I, sorry, I'm just picturing this. I, mean, oh, I, I, think I know you're pictures. a picture guy. I, I think in pictures. But it, I, think, I love that. As you're getting closer to God, you're actually getting closer to each other. So, that it's like unity with Him breeds unity with your spouse. Yeah. And you know we're on a triangle... Wow. The, the the hardest part to break, the most force you can apply to a triangle that it can resist that force, mm. the top, where God is. It's the strongest piece. It's the strongest piece of this, one That's of the right. strongest shapes, right? My goodness. And think Bob about what happens. Right. You're both focused upward on God towards yeah. the center. Now you, this foundation is also part of that triangle, and that foundation is now firm. Completely. Because you're both focused on God. If you're focused on other things, splits things. You make different shapes. Right? Yeah. Um, so, I this is the deeper dive. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you all don't take notes at church, I would so recommend taking notes at church because I don't Please. know if you'll ever get invited on the deeper dive, but you might. And if you do, <laughs> you can go back in your notes and found what I found. <laughs> find it. what I found, which is I went all the way back to July of 2021. July 2021. July 2021, Pastor Tony taught on the kingdom of God. And he talked about priorities for kingdom agenda, right? So if you're a Christian, what your priorities should be based on Matthew 22. Okay. And in Matthew 22, he talks about uh, the greatest commandments, right? Mm -hmm. Love God. Second, love others. By the way, if you never figured this out, this was shown to me a long time ago. This is cool. You love God, and then you love others. What does that make? Makes a cross. Makes a cross. I just saw that as you did that. Yeah. So it's like if you if you can do, and and bipartisan. Think about that. It's like this the horizontal beam. You you said this is loving others, like loving others, yeah. right? You can't the horizontal beam can't float without that vertical beam. Yeah. The horizontal beam cannot be there without that. Yeah. That's, God, that's pretty powerful. It's pretty awesome. That's pretty powerful. So it, it, if you have that connection, then you are thus enabled to have that horizontal stretch. Yeah, and he broke it down even further into what a, a kingdom family should wow. look like, a godly family, which is in a family, in a married couple, mm -hmm. um, they both should prioritize God first because that's what, that's what Jesus said, love God. Then he said love others. So then if we yeah. break others down, the priority goes love God, love your spouse, mm -hmm. then love your children. And then he goes on to others, church, work, your recreation time. But it yeah. starts with that first triangle. And uh, I true, I have always thought, I've, I, I have, unfortunately, 
um, seeing a lot of couples and families um, let the enemy tear them apart and, and tear up families and tear up marriages. I've uh, seen it. You know, Kristen and I did, we were part of a, a couples ministry and a marriage ministry a long time ago in our old church back in Florida. And we were just constantly surrounded um, with couples that ended up having troubles, right? Uh, and I see in every one of them, God was not the priority, hmm. right? And then other parts of the hierarchy or the order of priority broke down where, um, you know, if you if you seek your joy, your happiness, your purpose from your spouse, I can oh, guarantee man. you that will fail. Yeah, you were setting your spouse up to fail you. It's going to happen. They're a person. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to them. No, that's not fair to you, or it's not fair to anybody. Because as we talked about in that setting of the stage of when it comes to marriage, by design, your purpose is to get you get your purpose from being connected to God in and of yourself. Adam's purpose and Eve's purpose was the same, and everything else for them to be together and all that, that's just underneath the purpose that is. Eve was supposed to be connected to God. Adam's supposed to be connected to God. And together, they are supposed to be going after and going deeper in their relationship with God. Your purpose should be upward. Completely. And Not utterly. lateral. Right? Um, another thing that happens, mm -hmm. and I've seen this so many times, couples start off in love with each other maybe even starts off as, as agape love, which mm -hmm. Pastor Sharon talked about, the difference between agape love, phileo love, uh, well, eros love, right? So go watch the uh, the, I, the service. Maybe another time we need to talk about that, because oh, I yeah. enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed that. So Keep maybe it talking. starts off as agape love, true love. Yeah. But if both spouses or one spouse prioritize the children or the child and seek their joy and purpose from raising that child, that is another thing that can break up marriages and families because the child's not God. And I know it sounds weird. It might sound mean. It sounds very anti-human, yeah. right? Because that's what we've been taught. That's what we've been reared on. That's the American way. It's the every human everywhere way. You know, put yeah. your family first. And you, have you not heard that? Family first. Family first, yeah. But that's, that's, a, that's a world principle. And it I, is. people will say that's a life principle. But we are not from here. It's not a godly principle. It's, it's not a god principle. It's not a kingdom principle. It's not. Um, and what I've seen happen is uh, when the children finish and go off to school, mm -hmm. or things get hard with the child, maybe, if the child is the focus and the priority... Suddenly the purpose is gone. Suddenly the purpose is gone. Yeah. Right? Tough, um, man. Kristen and I, Kristen, my wife... Uh, decided a long time ago we would have a triangular marriage, a kingdom marriage, and a kingdom family. And when Avery was old enough to understand, we told him, hey, we just want to let you know we love you. We'd do anything for you. But our order of priority is our relationship with God, our individual relationship with God, and our Amen. couple relationship with God, yeah. then each other, then you. And it's how I've raised Avery to understand what godly marriage should look like. I love that. Right? And uh, he understood from a young age. That's that's the deal. That's how it's going to be. And there's going to be times where mom and dad are going to spend time with each other before they spend time with you. Mm. Uh, and, I mean, I'm not bragging on my own kid, but <laughs> he's, pretty, he's, he's pretty good. I I'll brag on him. Uh, <laughs> anybody that wants to hear me brag on him, come see me and just say, hey, I watched the deeper dive and I want to hear about Avery. I'll be like, all right, sit down. It's going to take a minute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, something that somebody told me, Steve, and it goes right in line with what you're saying about being so vertically vertical minded. Just I am thinking about the Lord. I'm looking up with my life. That's, that's what I'm doing. I'm chasing the king. I'm trying to get closer to him, following my purpose, all the stuff, right? Uh, something that... I've heard, and I took it a little step further, um, I heard a sermon when I was in youth ministry, and the sermon I was listening to was all about getting lost in Jesus. And they they kept saying, um, I forgot his name, I think it was Pastor Jacob or something, and he said, stop trying to get lost, he was talking about dating among teenagers, stop trying to get lost in other people's love, get lost in his love. And then the whole point was, he was like, if you just get lost in his love, then God will work things out. Let God just just if you are actually trying to make things happen with love in with love in the world, then you don't trust that God has things lined up for you. Adam didn't argue with God when he was presented with Eve. And remember, 
God didn't ask Adam's input or permission or anything when he was creating Eve. Adam just simply trusted in his relationship with God, and God brought him that woman. And then he was like, yeah! Yeah, it was the best thing in the world. <laughs> I was like, woo! Uh, but something that kind of stuck to me, and it's like the one-liner, if you will, that I got out of that is, if you can get this principle of the kingdom marriage, the triangle, it's like maybe you're dating right now and maybe you're married right now and you're not dating your spouse like you're supposed to, like you're always continually supposed to. Think about it like this. Get so lost, especially for those who are young and not they're not married and you're dating, get so lost in Jesus, so obsessed with following Jesus that people got to find him before they can ever find you. If you live like that, oh my goodness, you live so close to the top of that pyramid, the top of that triangle. Like think of it like they can't crawl. Think of it like in the triangle. I just I picture minded. If she's on one side and you're on the other, and you're going up, the only way she can get to you, if, if you can't jump outside the triangle, she's got to follow the lines. He, she can't get to you unless she goes through Jesus. Yeah. You know, like if you think of it like that, like you, you have to come through the top of this pyramid in order to find the person you're looking for. Oh my goodness, you'll find someone who. God intended for your life. Yeah, who has the same agenda as you do, who Ding. has the same purpose as you do. Uh, the yes. other thing you think about when you think about that triangle and you think about two people leaning into God, mm -hmm. what happens eventually? They meet, and you've got a, you've got a, you've got a partner you're already leaning on. Like Heck it's yeah. built in, and God's design for marriage that you can lean on each other and support each other when you put God at the center. It's built into the design. And keep showing them that shape. Show them that shape again. Something spoke out to me when he does the shape. This shape right here, that's the shape of the tip of a spear. Yeah. Oh, so, powerful weapon. Powerful weapon. Not, I don't know why I thought of this, but the Holy Spirit, thank you. But just just think about that for a second. You have you have this this idea that if I can just come together, I, I, like, I could be defended. That's what you're telling me? Yes, that's exactly what we're telling you. The Bible is clear that if you can just live life by God's design, there's example after example after example, live by his design, You'll get to this point where you have someone you can truly lean on, but aside from having someone you can truly lean on, you have someone who joins you in becoming a weapon. A powerful weapon. Yeah. And let's take a break. Let's take a break real quick. We'll come back in just a few moments.